You are looking live at Launch Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready for launch, to send an American astronaut and two Roscosmos cosmonauts into orbit on a fast-track two-orbit journey to reach the International Space Station that will be their home for the next six months. Good morning from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room as countdown clocks are ticking backward for the launch of the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft atop its Soyuz booster at 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.54 and 49 seconds p.m. in Baikonur, about seven minutes after sunset in the Central Asian Desert. The weather in Baikonur is ideal, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, cloudless sky for today's launch. Earlier today, the Soyuz booster was fueled for launch by engineers in Baikonur, a process that was completed a few hours ago. The launch control team in Baikonur reporting that all systems are go for launch, working no issues as the countdown enters its final phase. Here in Mission Control, the team is watching over the Expedition 67 crew and station systems okay. on the International um, Space Station. The Orbit 2 team having just completed a shift handover from the Overnight Orbit 1 team, preparing to support the arrival of Soyuz MS-22 later today. The station population will increase temporarily from 7 to 10 with the addition of NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, and his Roscosmos crewmates, Soyuz Commander Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. The crew is all set to begin its three-hour flight to the International Space Station, docking scheduled at 12.11 p.m. Central Time to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Once the hatches are opened between the newly arrived Soyuz and the station, the new residents will be greeted by Station Commander Oleg Artemiev of Roscosmos and his Roscosmos crewmates, Denis Matveyev and Sergei Korsakov, along with NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Jessica Watkins, and European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Christoforetti. She will take over as Expedition 68 commander during a change of command okay. ceremony next week before Artemiev, Madveyev, and Korsakov depart in their Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft headed for a parachute-assisted landing on September 29th on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Frank Rubio today becomes the first American to launch on a Soyuz spacecraft since Mark Van de Heide did so in March of 2021. Rubio is flying on the Soyuz MS-22 vehicle, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina is flying to the station as part of the SpaceX Crew Dragon Crew-5 crew that includes NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Koichi Wakata. This ensuring a reciprocal method of maintaining maximum launch and landing capability for safe space station operations. The Crew-5 crew is in quarantine now, preparing for their launch to the station early next month. Here in Mission Control, as mentioned, a shift handover just completed. At the bottom of your screen is Flight Director Allison Bollinger. She will be the Flight Director uh, on console throughout the day today for launch docking and the subsequent hatch opening later this afternoon. That will enable Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin to uh, take residence on board the International Outpost. At the top of your screen, veteran astronaut Jessica Meir. She'll be talking to the space station crew throughout the day when required. Half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow, the Russian flight controllers uh, are carefully watching all the data on their consoles. They will take over control of the flight of the Soyuz MS-22 to the International Space Station about 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, after third stage shutdown on the Soyuz booster and spacecraft separation. They will then be in control of Soyuz operations all the way through its planned automated docking to the Rosviet module. That you're hearing music that is being piped into the Soyuz spacecraft uh, by launch controllers at the blockhouse in Baikonur, a uh, time-honored tradition. The launch now less than 50 minutes away. We'll get a final go-no-go no go for launch in about 20 minutes from now. 
This is a live view of Soyuz MS-22 on the launch pad at Baikonur. Site 31 is the launch site for today. Liftoff again scheduled for 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.54 and 49 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. The countdown proceeding on schedule, no issues being reported by the engineers down in Baikonur. Atop the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster strapped into their seats in the descent module or center section of the Soyuz spacecraft are NASA's Frank Rubio and Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin of Roscosmos. Prokopiev, as Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Patelin, serving as board engineer number one, and to Prokopiev's right, NASA's Frank Rubio, serving as board engineer two. For Rubio and Patelin, this will be their first flight into space. For Prokopiev, his second flight into space. From time to time through the interpreter uh, that you'll be hearing uh, uh, regarding ascent performance calls, you'll hear the Soyuz call sign of Altai. That is a mountain range in Central and Eastern Asia. Each Soyuz commander selects uh, a call sign for their Soyuz vehicle from launch to docking and again from undocking through landing. Altai is Prokopiev's call sign for his Soyuz vehicle. If you're just joining us, again, you're looking live at Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Central Asian Desert as we stand 48 minutes and 17 seconds away from liftoff of the three new residents to the International Space Station, Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. Again, that's uh, music uh, being piped into uh, the spacecraft uh, for the cosmonauts uh, Prokopiev and Patelin and for the NASA astronaut Frank Rubio to listen to, basically uh, keeping them relaxed in the final minutes of the countdown that will lead to launch uh, about 47 and a half minutes from now. The crew flew to the Baikonur Cosmodrome from their training base at Star City on September 5th for final pre-launch okay. training and inspections of their Soyuz uh, spacecraft. The While that was ongoing, the Soyuz MS-22 was encapsulated into the upper stage of the Soyuz booster in the integration building. And after the three stages of the booster were mated together late last week, the Soyuz rocket, as you see in this video, began its trek to the launch pad last Sunday, hauled to the pad horizontally on a rail car and a process that took about 40 minutes to complete. Once at the pad, the Soyuz was raised hydraulically to its vertical position for final pre-launch preparations. We continue to watch countdown clocks ticking backward for the launch of the next crew to the International Space Station 46 and a half minutes from now. Out on the launch pad at Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the Soyuz booster is poised for launch fully fueled with kerosene and liquid oxygen as the propellant. The Soyuz 2.1A is the ticket to ride for crews launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Let's take a closer look at that Soyuz booster. The Soyuz rocket stands 162 feet tall, weighs about 640,000 pounds, and consists of the Soyuz spacecraft inside a protective shroud at the top and the three-stage Soyuz 2.1A booster below. The first stage has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for one minute and 58 seconds before they drop away. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until four minutes and 57 seconds into the flight. The third stage has a single engine that will ignite before the separation of the second stage, helping to push it away safely. It will burn until the eight minutes and 46 seconds mark of the flight, and at that point, the Soyuz spacecraft will separate from the third stage, having arrived at its preliminary orbit. Launch site uh, 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan is what you're looking at right now in the Central Asian desert. Again, uh, the weather is ideal as uh, we are approaching sunset at the launch site. Sunset uh, will occur at about uh, 6.47 p.m. in Baikonur, about uh, seven minutes before liftoff. We'll talk a bit more about the orbital mechanics of this two-orbit rendezvous for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin in just a moment. 
Again, uh, atop uh, that uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster strapped into their seats in the descent module of the uh, Soyuz are NASA's Frank Rubio and Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin of Roscosmos as uh, the countdown is uh, now 44 and a half minutes from launch. The uh, Soyuz spacecraft, the MS-22, which will be headed to the International Space Station a short time from now, is comprised of three sections. Let's take a look at the uh, Soyuz spacecraft that soon will be delivering Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin to the International Outpost. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 24 and a half feet long with an overall volume of 177 cubic feet and comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing, and contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight. It also houses life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachute and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown as the spacecraft lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on the module, which are used to control the spacecraft's orientation, or attitude, during the descent until parachute deployment. The descent module also contains a guidance, navigation, and control system used to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. This descent module is 7.3 feet long with a diameter of 7.1 feet and a habitable volume of 124 cubic feet. It is the only portion of the Soyuz that survives the return to Earth. The orbital module at the top is 9.8 feet long. It connects to the descent module via pressurized hatch. This is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around following launch during the flight to the space station. It has a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock with the space station, and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the station for docking. There is also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of failure of the rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communication and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays are folded against the body of the propulsion module, which, along with the orbital module, separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the unlikely event the crew needs to leave the station unexpectedly. And you'll be seeing a lot more of uh, that Soyuz spacecraft a few hours from now as it approaches for a docking to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. This is a uh, split screen morning. On the left side of your screen, NASA's Space Launch System, 322 feet tall, sitting on launch pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center in the process of undergoing a cryogenic propellant tanking test that could pave the way, if successful, for the maiden launch of the SLS on September 27th to send uh, the Orion spacecraft on a 40-day mission uh, around the moon and back to Earth. Everything so far going well. The go for tanking uh, occurred uh, about 6.25 a.m. Central Time with cryogenic uh, propellant loading starting just before 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. On the right side of your screen, of course, in the Baikonur Cosmodrome at Site 31 is the fully fueled Soyuz 2.1A booster. So halfway around the world from each other, NASA extending its reach both with uh, future Artemis program operations and uh, the replenishment uh, and extension of a crew to the International Space Station with today's Soyuz launch of Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin.
Again, uh, the music you're hearing is being piped in from the blockhouse in Baikonur by launch controllers uh, to the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft and its three occupants who are strapped into the center section of the Soyuz, the descent stage. Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, is in the middle seat, flanked to his left by Dmitry Patelin of Roscosmos and to his right by NASA's Frank Rubio. The countdown uh, is proceeding toward a launch just over 39 minutes from now. We should get a final go, no go for launch within the next 10 minutes. The launch uh, again uh, will be eight minutes and 45 seconds between liftoff and third stage shutdown of the Soyuz booster and spacecraft separation, placing the Soyuz in its initial uh, preliminary orbit to begin the chase uh, to reach uh, the International Space Station. The way uh, today's orbital mechanics work is that the Soyuz booster will launch into a narrow phase angle of about 13 degrees. It's basically uh, like going uh, up an off-ramp uh, or an on-ramp onto a freeway, making sure you're in the correct lane with the launch time calculated for this fast-track two-orbit rendezvous to ensure that the uh, rotation of the Earth carries the Baikonur Cosmodrome into the plane of the International Space Station's orbit at the precise moment. There is only a 10-second launch window available for the Soyuz vehicle. Once a third stage shutdown and orbital insertion occurs for Soyuz, uh, along with spacecraft separation, the Soyuz will automatically deploy its uh, twin solar arrays and its navigational antennas and will begin the chase to catch up to the International Space Station. A series of automated rendezvous burns will take place over the next uh, two hours or so following uh, launch to place uh, the Soyuz in the neighborhood of the International Space Station for final approach, a fly around, uh, that will begin at about 11.50 a.m. Central Time. That will precisely align uh, the Soyuz forward docking probe with the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the uh, International Space Station's Russian segment. Uh, there will be a brief period of station keeping to allow uh, the uh, flight controllers at the uh, control center in Korolev to uh, uh, assess uh, the precise alignment of the Soyuz with the Rosviet module before approval is given for final approach. If everything is going as planned, this should be an automated approach, although Prokopiev will be standing by to take over manual control of the flying of the Soyuz in the event uh, there should be a problem with the Corps' automated rendezvous system on the Soyuz vehicle. If everything goes as planned, docking is scheduled at 12.11 p.m. Central Time, 1.11 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by the closing of the hooks to form a hard mate between the Soyuz and the International Space Station. Some of the events you'll be seeing in the final minutes uh, before launch uh, will include uh, the purging of fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines at about the T minus four minute mark. Uh, those uh, rocket engines uh, will be purged with nitrogen to fireproof them, removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer uh, before uh, the key to drainage call is made by the uh, launch controllers at Baikonur that basically uh, places uh, the valves through which evaporated or gaseous oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere. At the same time, the valves are providing liquid oxygen to replenish the fuel supply lost by the boil-off or evaporation uh, through the normal course of uh, the fueling of the rocket. At the T-minus 2 minute 45 second uh, mark in the countdown, uh, the first stage uh, fuel and oxidizer tanks will be pressurized to optimize fuel flow and to provide structural rigidity to the launch vehicle as it sits on the launch pad, as you see there in Baikonur. And uh, at the T-minus 45 second mark, the activation of the S-band ground-to-air radio command link channel will be made for the uh, three crew members on board the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft. 
There are two umbilicals that are buttressed up against uh, the side of the Soyuz vehicle. One of those umbilicals will retract at about the T-minus 30-second mark or so. The second of the two umbilicals will retract at the T-minus 12-second mark, and that will initiate the auto sequence start for engine ignition and eventually for liftoff. And now uh, you see the gantry arms beginning to spread uh, right on schedule at the uh, T-minus 34 minute, 30 second mark into the countdown. Uh, this uh, obviously exposes the vehicle for the first time. On top is the uh, launch escape system. In the unlikely event, uh, there would be a technical issue that would require the Soyuz to be pulled free from the upper stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. And about three minutes from now, uh, the flight control team here in Mission Control in Houston, led by Flight Director Allison Bollinger, uh, will be pulling the team for a go for launch. She will uh, relay that to her counterpart at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev, half a world away. Inside 33 minutes now before launch, we should be uh, receiving from Baikonur about three minutes from now a uh, video B-roll package of uh, launch morning activities uh, that the three crew members engaged in uh, before they arrived and uh, at the point that they arrived at the launch pad at Site 31. So we'll be standing by for that. All the uh, launch preparations continue to go well. And again, down at the uh, Kennedy Space Center on Launch Pad 39B, the cryogenic propellant tanking test for the Space Launch System on Pad 39B continues uh, so far. Uh, that could, if all goes well, lead to the launch of the Space Launch System on its maiden flight on September 27th. As well as the inhibits to uh, choose the additional formats uh, or displays on ANPO. We copy. The form, the accelerometer is on. We copy. As we mentioned at the uh, top of the broadcast, it is uh, an ideal evening for launch for the three crew members to the International Space Station. The temperature in Baikonur is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, not a cloud in the sky. The launch to occur about uh, seven minutes after sunset. It should be spectacular as the Soyuz arcs out to the northeast headed uh, for the International Space Station. This is a two-orbit uh, rendezvous today, precisely calculated. It will take just over three hours for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin to reach their destination through a series of pre-programmed automated engine firings that will first uh, elevate uh, and increase their altitude toward the station after third stage separation on the uh, Soyuz booster and uh, separation of the Soyuz spacecraft from the third stage. The uh, stair-step fashion that uh, they will undertake uh, to reach uh, the vicinity of the International Space Station will be undertaken uh, through a series of so-called impulse burns of the Soyuz engine that will steadily uh, close the gap between themselves and the International Outpost over the three-hour-plus period that will follow liftoff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, here's our uh, video uh, B-roll feed from earlier today. Launch day for the three crew members beginning several hours ago after they were awakened at their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters to begin final pre-launch activities. The crew uh, departed the Cosmonaut Hotel and boarded a bus for their 40-minute ride uh, to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. You see them in their uh, traditional and familiar walkout from the Cosmonaut Hotel, the backup crew following them, Oleg Kononenko, Laurel O'Hara, Nikolai Chubb. In the parking lot uh, to the Cosmonaut Hotel, the usual crowd of well-wishers. And you see uh, Frank Rubio on the right, Sergei Prokopiev in the middle, Dmitry Patelin on the left. Again, uh, the three crew members uh, posing for pictures uh, to the crowd of well-wishers in the parking lot of the Cosmonaut Hotel as they uh, prepared to board the bus, which they're doing. This again uh, took place several hours ago at the Cosmonaut Hotel in the town of Baikonur as they uh, departed for about a 40-minute ride to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Cosmodrome itself. Two buses, uh, the first bus with the prime crew, the second bus with the backup crew exiting uh, the parking lot at the Cosmonaut Hotel en route uh, to the integration and suit up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And now, uh, after arriving at the integration building, each of the crew members underwent final medical exams and suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. And uh, as you'll see here momentarily, one by one, the crew members moved to a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat, allowing uh, technicians to conduct pressure checks on their suits, ensuring that the suits would be free of any leaks. Sergei Prokopiev uh, was the first uh, to undergo uh, his suit leak checks, embarking today on the second flight of his career. Dmitry Patelin and Frank Rubio of NASA beginning the first flights of their spaceflight careers. Again, the music you're hearing uh, 
is uh, being piped into the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft uh, from engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. This is a video that was uh, received uh, and acquired uh, several hours ago at the integration and suit-up facility at the Baikonur Cosmodrome as uh, Sergei Prokopia first, then Dmitry Patelin underwent uh, leak checks to their Soyuz uh, Sokol launch and entry suits and then had an opportunity to uh, exchange final remarks with their families. As you'll see a short time from now, also uh, exchanging uh, a final opportunity for remarks uh, with NASA and Roscosmos managers. And Frank Rubio settling in uh, several hours ago for the leak checks on his Sokol launch and entry suit. Part of the NASA delegation uh, in the audience there across the uh, protective pane of glass uh, to maintain quarantine uh, restrictions for the crew. Uh, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director uh, Steve Kerner, the ISS Program Manager Joel Montalbano, Reed Wiseman, NASA's Chief Astronaut, Norm Knight, uh, the Director of Flight Operations here at the Johnson Space Center. Ken Bowersox, uh, the NASA Deputy Associate Administrator, also on hand in Baikonur for today's launch. Again, uh, the three crew members who are now strapped inside their Soyuz spacecraft exchanging uh, well wishes with their family members across the uh, protective pane of glass. And uh, with the family members having had an opportunity to uh, talk to the crew members, uh, it was uh, time for Roscosmos and NASA managers to exchange final well wishes uh, with the uh, crew. You see at the top of your screen, uh, Sergei Krikalov, who uh, flew twice on space shuttle missions to the International Space Station. These, uh, this exchange of uh, pleasantries uh, between uh, the crew and the Roscosmos managers essentially amounts uh, to a report on the readiness of the vehicle for launch and uh, final well wishes uh, before the crew uh, departs the integration building to head for the launch pad itself.
And there's uh, Ken Bowersox, uh, former astronaut and NASA's uh, Deputy Associate Administrator, and Joel Montalbano, the ISS Program Manager, offering their final uh, well wishes for a successful launch that is now just uh, 18 minutes and 50 seconds away. With the uh, pleasantries having been uh, completed, uh, the crew members then left uh, the Site-254 integration building. And you'll see in a moment, uh, Procopia, the Soyuz commander, uh, reporting that he and his crewmates were ready to proceed to the launch pad. With that, uh, the trio boarded their bus about uh, three and a half hours ago for the ride to Launch Site 31, a trip uh, that took almost one hour to complete. And here you see uh, the bus with the crew arriving at the pad, uh, the crew uh, climbing a few stairs that you'll see in a moment, waving goodbye to well-wishers and entering the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to board their spacecraft, which they've now been aboard for the past two plus hours. Again, uh, this is video uh, that was uh, taken several hours ago as uh, the three crew members arrived at launch site 31 at the launch pad having an opportunity uh, to say goodbye one final time uh, to well-wishers at the pad, as well as managers from NASA and Roscosmos, before boarding the uh, elevator at the pad for the ride up to the top of the Soyuz 2.1A booster to board their spacecraft, which they've now been aboard uh, for a little over two hours. And we are now uh, back live uh, with a view of the uh, Soyuz MS-22 rocket on the launch pad at Site-31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Launch is uh, scheduled just 14 and a half minutes from now at uh, 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.54 and 49 seconds p.m. in Baikonur, about seven minutes after sunset. Atop the uh, 2.1A booster strapped into their seats in the uh, descent module of the Soyuz, NASA's Frank Rubio, along with Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin of Roscosmos. 
As mentioned uh, earlier, Procopia, the Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the descent module of the Soyuz MS-22, Patelin to his left, and Rubio to his right. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying over northwest Uzbekistan. The station and the Expedition 67 crew will pass directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome one minute, 58 seconds after launch, and will leapfrog past the ascending Soyuz vehicle as it heads to orbit. Eight minutes and 45 seconds after launch, the third stage engine of the Soyuz booster will shut down and the Soyuz will separate from its launch vehicle in a preliminary orbit, deploying its solar arrays and its navigational antennas. At that point, the three crew members will be trailing the space station by about a thousand miles. The chase will begin, resulting in a docking to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station at 12.11 p.m. Central Time today. As you saw earlier, uh, a NASA delegation is in Baikonur at this hour, preparing to watch the launch of the crew to the International Space Station. NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator Ken Bowersox, ISS Program Manager Joel Montalbano, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director Steve Kerner, Norm Knight, the Director of Flight Operations here at uh, the Johnson Space Center, and NASA's Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman, all in Baikonur to watch Frank Rubio begin his mission. and. NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt, who filed this report a short time ago. Thanks, Rob, and greetings from Baikonur. As you said, a small group of medical and support personnel, along with some NASA leadership, are on hand here in Kazakhstan uh, to support Frank's launch today. The delegation includes NASA's International Space Station Program Manager Joel Montalbano, and he sat on the State Commission on Tuesday to give formal approval to move forward with launch. Several of our key personnel, including our Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman, have been living in quarantine alongside Rubio just during all of his final preparations here, which have all continued along smoothly. It's been clear skies throughout the week's events and is shaping up to be picturesque with liftoff coming in the twilight hours here at the Cosmodrome. We're all gathered within sight of the launch pad and have some additional personnel staged with SAR forces to support any contingency situations. Now, Rubio is looking to join his 2017 astronaut class colleagues, Jessica Watkins and Bob Hines on board the station. And he's had fellow classmate, Laurel O'Hara here on hand as part of the backup crew in advance of her own launch next spring. So everything remains go here in Baikonur. Good luck to the crew of Soyuz MS-22. And I'll hand it back over to Rob and Mission Control Houston to continue with the countdown. Thanks, Dan. Dan Hewitt, uh, who's at uh, the viewing site just a couple of miles away from uh, the 2.1A booster that you see on the launch pad as the sun begins to set over the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Sunset actually about three minutes from now with the launch taking place just over 10 minutes from now at uh, 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.54 and 49 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. All of the uh, launch preparations have gone off uh, without a hitch to this point. Everything is in readiness. Altair, this is number three, L minus five, close virus, visors. Fifteen, three, this is Altair, one, visors are closed. Rescue aids are ready. Altair 16-3, second camera is on. We are watching the flight engineer too. Copy.
We're approaching the uh, T-minus nine minute mark in the countdown. Uh, preparations are continuing uh, in good fashion at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. No issues reported. We're about two minutes away from the completion of pre-launch operations. At this point in the countdown, the Soyuz's first and second stage engines are ready for launch, telemetry having been received from the rocket, indicating that all primary and backup systems are set to support liftoff. Once again, uh, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying 259 miles over northern Uzbekistan some 335 statute miles behind the Soyuz as it leaves the launch pad. A very narrow uh, phase angle for launch uh, for orbital insertion that will ensure the beginning of a two orbit, three plus hour rendezvous to reach the International Space Station. And uh, during the uh, Soyuz climb to orbit, the ISS will leapfrog ahead of Soyuz and Soyuz will then uh, be catching up to the uh, International Space Station uh, through a series of pre-programmed rendezvous burns. Sergei Prokopiev, the uh, Soyuz commander, reporting back uh, to uh, launch controllers in Baikonur that everything is in readiness aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft. You see the booster on the launch pad. Again, uh, the two umbilical towers that are buttressed up against the Soyuz, the first will retract at about the T-minus 30 or 35 second mark. The second of those two umbilicals will retract at about the 12 second mark before launch, initiating the auto sequence start for engine ignition and ultimately for liftoff. Inside six and a half minutes from launch, uh, a launch key has been inserted in the launch bunker. This is a real key that transitions the launch sequence into automatic mode. And uh, launch controllers down at Baikonur reporting that the range is clear, the Soyuz rocket ready to begin its journey. Launch key inserted. The uh, three crew members uh, strapped into their seats in the center section of the descent module have closed their visors for launch. Sergei Prokopiev reporting that everything is in readiness on board uh, the Soyuz, flanked uh, to his right by NASA's uh, Frank Rubio and to his left by Roscosmos cosmonaut Dmitry Patelin. Five and a half minutes until launch, onboard systems will be switching to onboard control. The commander's cockpit displays now activated. Passing now the five minute mark into the countdown. Strip chart recorders in the launch control center now activated. They will be uh, recording telemetry from the launch vehicle during liftoff and its climb to orbit. The sun setting on the Central Asian desert, everything in readiness for launch at 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.54 and 49 seconds p.m. Baikonur Time. The 
the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines now being purged with nitrogen to fireproof them to remove vapors of fuel and oxidizer for the final minutes of the countdown. Moments from now, a, a key uh, will be placed in the drainage position. The valves through which evaporated or gaseous oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere are closed as uh, the fuel begins to drain back into the tanks. At the same time, the valves providing liquid oxygen to replenish those tanks will be lost by uh, the natural boil off or evaporation. Coming up on the T minus three minute mark in the count, The drainage uh, has now been completed. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds until launch. The fuel and oxidizer tanks now being pressurized to optimize fuel flow to provide additional structural rigidity to the launch vehicle on the pad. Booster propellant tank pressurization initiated. Tank pressurization uh, underway, everything in good shape as we approach the T minus two minute mark in the count. The vehicle, vehicle is nominal. Copy. Passing through two minutes, coming up on the termination of the ground propellant feed to the Soyuz booster. T minus one minute, 30 seconds until launch. The Soyuz about to go on internal power. This in cabin view showing uh, at the bottom of your screen, Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, and at the top of your screen, Dmitry Patelin, Frank Rubio on the right of Prokopiev, out of the field of view here. We are now 50 seconds from launch. Vehicle switch to internal power, first umbilical tower separation. First umbilical should be retracting, and there it goes. The second umbilical will retract at about the T minus 15 second mark. Auto sequence. The uh, second umbilical has retracted. This will initiate the auto sequence start. T minus 10 seconds and counting. We have engine start. Tower separation. Turbo pumps coming up to flight speed. Turbo pumps, flight speed, and, and liftoff. A sunset start to the mission of Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin to the International Space Station. Ten seconds, flight is nominal. Good first stage performance reported from the blockhouse at Baikonur. The Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. L plus 20, L plus 20. Arcing out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 35 seconds into the flight. Everything looking good so far. Good roll pitch and yaw program. 
A vehicle reported structural stability is good. Approaching the one minute mark into the flight. He's feeling well, vehicle is nominal. Copy. Velocity now about 1100 miles per hour. Yaw pitch and roll program all reported to be nominal from the blockhouse at Baikonur. Nominal. Vehicle is nominal, crew is feeling well. Prokopiev reporting the crew is feeling well. Coming up on the one minute 20 second mark into the flight. Now passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. L plus 80 parameters are nominal. One minute, 35 seconds into the flight. Pressure in the room, parameter is above nominal. Copy casual parameter of nominal. Correct, affirmative. There's that. Jettison confirmed. And we've had uh, first stage separation. Nominal, crew is feeling well. KZO pressure parameter is nominal. Copy. KZO is nominal. Please report pressure. Eight, three, five, eight, eight, three, four. Two minutes, 35 seconds into the flight. Second stage engine operating nominally. The uh, second stage engine is operating normally. Now a view uh, from the uh, upper stage of the Soyuz booster as it continues to climb uphill. Launch shroud now has been jettisoned. Vehicle is nominal. The uh, Soyuz booster about 48 miles in altitude. Traveling about uh, 5,200 miles an hour, some 72 miles downrange. L plus 190. Three minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Is nominal. C uh, indication control descent available. Vehicle is nominal. Copy, indication is on. Well, good reports uh, so far. The flight reported as nominal as we approach the four minute mark into the flight. Pressure reached 105, 1500 for a moment. Copy. Second stage uh, engine continues uh, to burn as planned as we approach the four minute 15 second mark into the flight, about halfway through powered flight now. Copy. About 15 seconds away from second stage shutdown and the ignition of the third stage. L plus 270 parameters are nominal. Second stage separation confirmed. Second stage shutdown and separation is confirmed. The Soyuz now uh, climbing to orbit on the singular power of its third stage engine. Five minutes, 12 seconds into the flight, about three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. L plus 310, launch vehicle is stable. Vehicle is nominal, crew is feeling well. Prokopiev reports uh, that the crew is doing well. This uh, third stage engine providing 67,000 pounds of thrust for the uh, remaining three minutes of powered flight.
350. We've now hit the six minute mark into the flight. Everything going as planned. A true trajectory so far for the Soyuz booster. Now flying on the uh, third stage propulsion of its singular engine. Good roll pitch and yaw reported. Good structural stability reported. Three hundred eighty seconds. The engine of the third phase is working nominally. Four hundred seconds. Uh, the uh, stabilization of the article is in place. It is stable. Altai. Good uh, structural stability of the uh, Soyuz vehicle at the seven minute mark into the flight, about one minute, 45 seconds of powered flight remaining. Yaw pitch and roll all reported to be nominal. At the time of uh, third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, control of the Soyuz vehicle through docking will uh, transition to the uh, flight control team at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Seven minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Again, this view from uh, a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster, which should also uh, provide us a view of uh, the solar array deploy shortly after spacecraft separation. Nominal crew is feeling great. The crew uh, reported to be feeling great in the words of Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander. We have now reached the eight minute mark into the flight, 45 seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. For 80, uh, the parameters uh, of the launcher is nominal and uh, everything is nominal on orbit and the crew is feeling great. We're waiting for the separation. The uh, crew on board the uh, Soyuz MS-22, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin now about 15 seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Ten seconds. Five hundred twenty. And we have third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. You see the third stage dropping away. Time tag commands now uh, will deploy the solar arrays and the navigational antennas. Altai, Moscow. Altai, Moscow. And we now have confirmation of a uh, perfect solar array and navigational antenna deploy. The Soyuz MS-22 now in its preliminary orbit, and the chase has begun to catch up to the International Space Station with docking planned just three hours from now after a two-orbit journey. Docking scheduled at 12.11 p.m. Central Time. how do you read this? Altai, Moscow. If you read me, if you can copy me, then please continue per page 35 and start AKG. Altai 2, how do you read us? RP1, RP2 is closed. Yes, RPV1, RPV2. Yes, what about the separation contact? How did it go? It went nominally. How do you read me? This is Altai 1. And Altai 1, read you loud and clear, and we copy. Everything went nominally. Yes, there was a drop in comp and a delay in comp for a little bit. Now everything is nominal. Now we work per page 36. 
Yes, uh, the control is complete. Right. Right now we'll be working with ENPU2. So you need to select the display and uh, we confirm RDR along the roll axis is here. We confirm and we copy and we are monitoring that and the TV system is on and we are waiting for the first measurement from you. First measurement, 17.0421, pressure is 7.88, PO pressure 8.01. This is Mission Control Houston back here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Uh, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers uh, now uh, proceeding on uh, to monitor the progress of the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft to the International Space Station with docking schedule just a little over three hours from now. The uh, launch, uh, as you just saw, occurred on time at 8.54 and 49 seconds a.m. Central Time. Six fifty four and forty nine seconds PM at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, just a few minutes after sunset. All of the uh, ascent uh, activities uh, occurred on time and were perfectly normal. A perfect ascent to orbit, uh, third stage shutdown occurring eight minutes and forty five seconds after launch, right on time, enabling uh, the uh, three crew members on board uh, the Soyuz spacecraft, Frank Rubio, Dmitry Patelin, and the Soyuz commander, Sergei Prokopiev, to begin uh, all the procedures that will lead uh, towards an automated rendezvous and docking to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station at 12.11 p.m. Central Time. Our docking coverage uh, will uh, begin a little over two hours from now at 11.15 a.m. Central, 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time on the public channel. Meanwhile, we're going to return the public channel to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the cryogenic tanking test of the space launch system is continuing out on launch pad 39B. So we have a double dip for you today, uh, the Soyuz launch and upcoming rendezvous and docking of the three new residents of the International Space Station and the cryogenic tanking test that, if successful, could lead to a launch, the maiden launch of the space launch system on September 27th. For now, that'll wrap up our coverage of the launch of Soyuz MS-22 to the International Space Station. We'll see you back here in two hours for the rendezvous and docking coverage. In the meantime, this is Mission Control Houston. Andy.